Red Dead Redemption 2, Rockstar's magnum opus to close out their work on this entire console generation. We've been waiting seven to eight years on this project, spiraling from the exhilarating announcement that governed massive hype from the general public to controversy from fluff pieces documenting 100 hour work weeks. It's clearly been quite the irregular spectacle to behold. Red Dead Redemption is possibly one of the best open world cowboy simulators I've played last generation, mixing some very pleasing authenticity to that time period while giving us a scarred, mysterious history behind the antics of John Marston. Does Red Dead Redemption 2 follow in the same vein in terms of quality? Let's start off with the most important aspect, gameplay. The gameplay in Red Dead Redemption is practically identical to the previous game and Grand Theft Auto V. You control Arthur Morgan and trek through a plethora of areas ranging from snowed in mountains, caves, deserts, giant cities packed with density and bayous that will make a southern gator blush. The world is naturally dangerous, with all new surprises that creep around each corner, and there's a magnitude of dynamic events that perfectly burn through your time. You might choose to help someone who has been bitten by a poisonous snake, for example, or you could choose to ignore the requests and watch as they succumb to the venom. It's all tied to how you earn positive and negative fame points, money, and gaining new items that can aid you in the next firefight. The movement is heavily physics-based, so don't go in expecting Arthur Morgan to be an unstoppable locomotive train like Spider-Man in terms of movement. This has been a point of contention due to the application of clunky realism, which we'll cover in a moment. However, in particular, I really don't mind the deliberate awe of the Euphoria physics engine at work within this game. You accurately clamber, stumble, and fall realistically depending on the axis of the surface you're trekking through, along with inclement weather. Arthur can't initially sprint for too long without tiring out, but the micromanagement options and the toggle to run feature can gradually help you overcome some said issues. I just wish that you could do a light jog in your settlement camps because Rockstar thought it was a bright idea to hammer in forced walking segments during those times. Aiming might feel a bit surreal within gunplay to get a beat on your target when prominent pain wobble comes into play. But honestly, I could say these moments of hectic gun battles felt so visceral once I got the hang of it. Shotguns just blow off limbs, the common repeater returns along with sniper rifles, pistols, and revolvers, and they all tend to make short work of enemies depending on how good of a shot you can be. You can also craft several types of ammo now which does more damage, and you can even poison enemies with throwing knives in the middle of a firefight. It's that kind of versatility that gives gunfights and general combat a bit more heft when planning out your means of execution. The signature Deadeye mechanic returns to aid Arthur Morgan with slowing down time to mark and execute opponents before the Deadeye meter runs out. It works just as you would expect without many refinements to the execution. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The game also uses a familiar weapon wheel just like Max Payne 3 and GTA 5 along with options to cycle through weapons and equipment. It's a straightforward UI, although it could have had some improvement with how equipping weapons worked. You can only change weapons through the saddle of your horse, so if your animal isn't anywhere near you or if your horse is dead, then you're stuck without a means to swap your arsenal unless you go back to that saddle. You'll spend a good majority of the game deliberately on horseback, which might cause some irritation in an era where custom markers leading to your location feels like the norm in open world sandbox experience. Experiences. The map is super vast, so I'm puzzled why Rockstar didn't allow custom waypoints for stagecoaches, although there is a caveat to this because the mix of dynamic events makes it where you don't want to miss any of the game events. It doesn't make it entirely boring to explore, so you're more than likely doing an engaging task anyway before any reasonable doubt kicks in. The massive amount of options and the sheer scale will make you want to explore every vista, hunt for wildlife, engage in criminal bounties, and the list goes on. It all feels like a living, breathing environment, which you can easily get lost in for hours before even thinking about any sense of main story progression. It's one of those rare
rare rockstar traits that will keep you playing from start to finish once you push through from sheer discovery i can say that one of the mechanics that i care for the least is the micromanagement options which are similar to how you manage stats with carl cj johnson and gta san andreas except it is more monotonous here arthur will need to maintain his health weight horse agility and dead eye meter with something called cores think of it as an additional health bar for peak performance if one of the cores that arthur has turns red then it either warrants terrible conditions like not being able to use dead eye properly or not being able to sprint or losing stats by being underweight it just doesn't feel fun to manage all of these things by needing different items to raise your core experience this mechanic should have been simplified enough to increase stats or decrease stats depending on what you did in the game world just like gta san andreas did when red deck comes together on the gameplay front it does feel like an immersive spectacle but it does have a flawed mishmash of ideas that were best left on the cutting room floor you'll love the fundamental stupidity that this sandbox has to offer yet you'll be puzzled by the micromanagement system and the lack of custom waypoints in the game that doesn't have extreme in-game loading times one of the common criticisms about red dead redemption 2 seems to be complaints about the controls which does take a lot of mastery a lot of application if you're jumping into this game for the first time admittedly a game of this caliber does feel like it has too many options which leads to this experience being one of the most context sensitive games i've ever played i fully applaud rockstar for giving a gigantic help menu for players who didn't get all of the mechanics but there's still a few that goes relatively unexplained one of my main criticisms is that i had a situation where instead of engaging in the dialogue tree and talking to someone and holstering my weapon my character drew his weapon and shot an innocent person right in the goddamn head maybe an addition for customizable controls with the dialogue options could have helped in red dead's case considering that the conversation placement is indeed mapped to the default aiming button everyone i've talked to has made this mistake of aiming their weapon at someone over trying to talk to them more than once i'd also recommend tweaking your aiming sensitivity and dead zone options with the prompted settings since dead zone is on way too high by default i'm not really sure why rockstar did this on purpose although i will say you're better off experimenting with the sensitivity to make your experience more enjoyable one thing i will say and i will debunk is that the criticism about input lag and frame delay within the controls are absolutely false for me there is no fable input lag especially with the aiming in red dead redemption 2 i think this fairy tale claim was made by individuals who found the movement laborious and didn't distinguish the pain wobble properly when they were getting shot or they had a low stamina meter as long as arthur has good stamina you'll be able to line up a shot or dead eye someone if you're not good at manual aiming then there is a plethora of options for auto aim that is made readily available to the player even then these are all debates about startups on animations and frames and frame data when you could just go into the first person camera if you want to move faster just a little suggestion just for you these controls constitute to your standard rockstar experience mash x to run use square to jump the triggers are for drawing and firing even if you're experienced with the grand theft auto series like i said the controls are vast but you should know the basics when you get into the game even the aiming on horseback controls like a damn national treasure when you know how to do it right the only real problem like i said seems to be the fact that the conversation button and the aiming button is mapped to the same input and the dead zone is on way too high by default other than that i didn't really have many issues with how this game controlled before we go any further i want to reiterate and let people know that there will be spoiler warnings in the story segment here so if you haven't played red dead redemption 2 and you want to experience the entire game on your own then i would suggest skipping the spoiler section and go to the proposed time code in the video so you can listen to the rest of my review. Thank you and I hope you enjoy it. The story of Red Dead Redemption 2 takes place in 1899, right after the Blackwater Massacre that kicks off the events of Chapter 1. You play as Arthur Morgan, an outlaw of the Vanderlyn Gang, who is usually on the run from the Pinkerton Police Agency and other rival factions. After that massacre, it doesn't take long for the gang to 
initiate their survivalist instinct and flee into the mountains. And a slew of trouble ensues as you go out to save John Marston from an attack by savage wolves and engage in a firefight from the O'Driscoll gang, who has a long-standing rivalry that unfolds as Dutch and Combe O'Driscoll spill more blood over the remaining chapters. The story is really about Arthur Morgan regretting his life as an outlaw slowly and surely and the downfall of Dutch Vanderlyn as he slowly but surely cracks under the tension leading to a fragile leadership. We see it sprinkled throughout the plot as Dutch cracks his head, gains a concussion which causes him to go paranoid and crazy with aggression and we see a standoff with the Pinkertons ending with prominent members like Lenny and Hosea dying in cold blood. When Dutch loses his moral support with Hosea, he takes more drastic measures into his own hands to justify his means of survival which becomes the opposite of what he taught Morgan or Marston, doing things peacefully, robbing and giving money to the less fortunate. Now he just senselessly kills people as proven by the scene with Angelo Bronte and an innocent woman in retaliation in the Guarma chapters, all while manipulating the natives like eagle flies to his advantage. It shows that Dutch has changed forever which leads to his character being more cold blooded but having ideals in Red Dead Redemption 1. There is a lot of focus on Dutch going mad in these later chapters. The problems just pile on after your trip from Cuba. Arthur Morgan becomes affected with tuberculosis and it just becomes a matter of time for repentance for all the horrible misdeeds he did after Thomas Downs spits on Arthur and gives him tuberculosis. It's all about the weight of consequence and this new character going through his own tragic yet beautiful redemption arc by trying to do the right thing by saving the remaining gang members from Dutch's insanity so they start life anew. Given that this is a prequel, all the story events from the first game do creep in like Marston being left to die by Dutch or Edgar Ross looming over John's farmhouse in the distance in Beecher's Hope, deciding when a move should be made. It's not the most perfect plot. Some key pieces are left out like the fairy job and some things are retconned for the sake of convenience. That being said, I would be lying if I said that the story wasn't a deep engaging process in Red Dead Redemption 2. There's repetition there, surely, with Dutch's plans constantly going to shit, but it's just the characterization and what they go through that makes me care about what happens next. I actually care about Arthur Morgan. Arthur Morgan never existed in Red Dead Redemption 1. Rumors swirled that it was going to be difficult to care about a character we never heard of in the first game, but Rockstar did the unthinkable here due to impeccable writing and the time you spent with this character leading up to the gut shot when you realize his death is inevitable. This was made prevalent due to the fantastic work by all the voice actors creating believable characters and nuanced people throughout this entire experience. The main issues seem to stem from the lengthy pacing in the game that admittedly has a few ups and downs. Namely, there's a lot of fans that saw the Guamer chapter as filler due to his breakneck pacing with Arthur and Dutch getting involved in a civil war in a plantation. Psst. Scarface did it first, you chuckleheads. I do agree that some segments of Guarma felt like a completely detached experience with the exception of Dutch strangling a woman just to get out of a bind, showing the physical embodiment of Dutch changing in front of Arthur's eyes. They could have regulated this to a cutscene or something, but after some perspective, I thought that wouldn't be fun at all. Guarma's pacing of chapter five being preferably faster was a good injection, but the execution was questionable, especially due to the small map size and the lack of provisions that I earned previously. Maybe Rockstar could attempt something new that correlates to a Far Cry 3 or Just Cause style open jungle world after some blowback that Guarma received. Things could always be fixed for a future game if they take a better shot with it, but that being said, Chapter 5 did kind of feel like glorified filler with good pacing but some mixed results 
own decisions that were never really that great. Red Dead Redemption 2 is certainly worth the price of admission for a full $60 because there is a lot to do. This game took me about 60 to 80 hours just to complete the main story and some side missions. So there's a gigantic bulk in place. It has 108 missions, random events, gold medals for objectives, completionism with 100%, side missions, and an upcoming beta to test out the online portion at the end of November. The replay value almost seems endless. And if you're buying this, I think you're gonna get every portion of your money's worth with this massive project. The mileage may vary on the fun factor sometimes because there is the occasional task where things become insipid in distinctive chapters, but the positives far outweigh the negatives and with the way these missions are handled, it alleviates some tedium when you get into a nice battle or maybe you have a serene experience with a few characters talking. It allows for freedom once the world World opens up after chapter one to play around depending on your play style do you want to be sneaky do you want to go in guns blazing would you rather talk your way out of a situation when you're encountering an enemy stronghold options seem to be the most valuable asset in the mission structure of Red Dead Redemption 2 which keeps the replayability at an all-time high what is there to say about the graphical prowess of the Rage Engine? This game graphically is nothing short of beautiful. Absolute immersion is the only way I can describe the graphics and animations of Red Dead Redemption 2. Whether it's the unparalleled realism that comes from Arthur getting bruises on his face in the middle of a saloon fistfight, or the snow that leaves impending marks of passage as you slog through it, the game is on a whole different level when it comes to the extreme work that was put into the game in terms of jaw-dropping graphics. This game is so gorgeous. My only gripe is that the frame rate can tank a bit and take a bit of a nosedive when you're in bigger settlements, but even then, every stone wall, every brick, every radiant passage of light that oozes through the air with insane detail, all of it done in real time with the cutscenes to match. It's an added bonus that really leaves an impact when you see how this game looks. The only time you'll see a low screen is when you sleep boot up the game or fast travel, but everything outside of that is practically seamless with differing NPCs ready to greet you and bodies that decompose over time. This is just one of those games where you have to stare into the night sky and take it all in with Rockstar leaving no stone unturned here as every graphical detail looks refined to hell and back. Roger Clark as Arthur Morgan brings a deep grit to the caricature of an outlaw in the wild west. He lives and breathes for this lifestyle and he gradually changes to a character questioning his history over the course of the game with a dark backstory. Considering that this game has over 500,000 lines of dialogue all brilliantly acted, unorthodox, and feels like a Hollywood style format throughout, with the signature rockstar wit taking over all the pedestrians, it remains intriguing. The acting is just done pleasantly well, it's super sharp and the rest of the audibles adds to the atmosphere, especially the nature. When you have animals paw and attack you, when things make sporadic sounds in the distance when they've been wounded, when the wind rustles through the trees, when you hear bullets ricochet off objects, it's really, really great. The score, the sound, the acting are all cranked up on a surreal level and it feels authentic to the Wild West era. If you love the score in Red Dead Redemption 1, then the original composer has returned with new musical pieces and remixes to satisfy your taste buds. In conclusion, Red Dead Redemption 2 feels like a masterstroke of elements put together to bring you one of the most immersive games of the generation by far that seeks to refine its craft from the original Red Dead Redemption. A majority of things that Rockstar gets right are generally good things like the scale of the world and the open-ended gameplay and the insane amount of content placed in this package. All of it isn't perfection, however. The inventory for weapons could have been 
been better. You're forced to walk through camps and you'll experience confusion while trying to adapt to the controls for your first time. That being said, if you're a fan of Red Dead Redemption 1, then this game cannot be ignored, effectively displaying all of the burning questions that you had about Dutch's gang in a slow and methodical package. The game does take a while to pick up, but when it does, it gets great. Just temper your expectations a little bit about this being the perfect game. There's a few stumbling blocks in the road that shouldn't be ignored. In conclusion, I give Red Dead Redemption 2 an 8.8 .8 out of 10. This is Renegade Operative signing off and once again, thank all of you guys for tuning in to my Red Dead Redemption 2 review. Remember to like, dislike, comment, subscribe, maybe let me know what you thought about the review. Tell me what I could improve for the future. If you agreed, disagreed, sound off in the comments below and I will try to get back to you at my earliest convenience. The next project I will be working on is a review for Castlevania Season 2. A couple of people asked me about it and by the time I finish binge watching it because it's 7 episodes long, double the amount of Season 1. I will get right into it and give you guys my late thoughts on that along with possibly talking about the Adi Shankar um, crossover with DMC and Castlevania that's going on right now that was recently announced so I'm gonna pump out two videos on Adi Shankar stuff and give you my opinion on those soon so look forward to that in the future this is Renegade Operative signing off and as always take care